right, so um, let's come into our breath. So we're gonna just start with, I'm gonna move back so you can see me. Let's start with just a little bit of uh, breathing and moving. So before we even kind of acknowledge and uh, play with our breath, let's just kind of find a really good comfortable spot where you can get some wiggles out. Maybe you wanna um, swirl around in your spine or move your shoulders or your neck and just let yourself um, land in a very comfortable way on your, on your cushion or whatever you're sitting on. And then once you kind of feel that uh, settling, let's have some deep gratitude for the ability to close our eyes and turn inward the time and space and will to draw our attention to the inside. And as you close your eyes to find this, let's drop your awareness, your energy down your body. So, you know, maybe like a little waterfall starting at your crown, dropping your awareness down through your body all the way to your pelvic floor. And notice where you're landing. Can you relax your legs? Can you soften and settle into the ground a little bit more? Can you feel the earth support you from below? Are you broad in your base? Do you have enough uh, support underneath you? Do you feel like your pelvis is in a steady, neutral place where you, you can use it for supporting the rest of your torso? And from that place, let's find our spine. Imagine that you are light, that the discs are like balloons that are holding you up, that there can be a sense of effortlessness in some way to hold your spine in good shape. Allow that feeling to travel upward, upward, all the way to the crown of your head. Feel your face relax, your shoulders relax. And let's invite the breath. Okay, so as you uh, are aware of your body, let's see what it feels like to bring the breath in. To let the breath out. We're going to start with some box breathing. So um, that just simply means that the inhale, the exhale, and the two pauses in between are um, like two, all the four sides of a box, equal length breath. So um, I'm not going to count for you because everybody's a little different in what is a comfortable breath, but start out with an inhale and have that metronome count in your mind on your inhale and then pause your inhale for the same metronome number of beats. And then when you're ready, you can exhale. And then oftentimes people start with a count of four maybe travel up to a count of five or six, but um, don't do too much in the beginning. Um, and you might find, oops, I'm not regulated. My inhale's really long, but everything else feels like a stretch to have to hold that. So um, after the first round of a box breath, you might get a sense, oh, I, I really need to have a, this is a good rhythm, or I need to shift my rhythm a little bit. And you don't have to visualize a box, but you can if that's helpful. And just imagine not only the, the metronome, the rhythmic counting of those beats of the inhale, the pause, the exhale, and the pause all being equal. But see also within that rhythm, if you can feel the sense of what's happening in your lungs. Can you sense the rib cage and its movement as well as the rib cage in its stillness? both when you're holding a full set of lungs 
and when you are setting, it's holding an empty set of lungs. And uh, if you can take your awareness even beyond the sensation of your rib cage and lungs, see if you can be mindful to keep the shoulders relaxed, especially when you're holding that inhale. Let's try not to uh, rise up toward our ears. See if you can allow the diaphragm to have mobility so that when you are holding the diaphragm, there's not a sense of uh, gripping or such intensity that you are compressed. Notice if there's an urge to change what you're doing, if there's an urge to let your mind travel somewhere else, and just gently, very gently, gently keep bringing yourself back to the experience at hand. Train yourself to stay, even if it's challenging or you want to do something different with your breath or with your mind. Have a little bit of a side view that you're still grounded, that your, your legs and your pelvis have the support, that your spine can feel those balloons of your discs. A way to tell if you are stretching it too long is if that inhale comes in a big giant gulp. It's okay to have a sense of a little teeny bit of breath hunger. This is actually good for us, um, but not more than just a teeny bit of breath hunger. If your inhale comes in a giant whoop, then you know you have uh, uh, you're, you're striving too hard for this. You're working too hard. So back your number down. Complete the uh, number that you are on, whatever, wherever you are in that cycle, don't stop it. Wait till you get to the pause at the end of the exhale. And when you get to that place, you can release your mind from the counting, the attention to uh, equality and, you know, trying to harness control over the rhythm of your breath and just let your breath naturally rise and fall when that moment arrives. Now, you might still be in that box breath, but maybe you're done. And whenever you are ready to be finished, let's go ahead and take some seated cat cows. Let your spine round and then let your spine rise. Feeling your chin open up and your shoulders hug back. And just a few movements of your spine. Notice if you held any tension in your back or in your ribs or in your diaphragm or anywhere when we were doing that box breath. You can try that box breath lying down too. There's, It's not a rule that you have to be seated. Sometimes it's a nice thing to try doing in bed if you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't find yourself falling back to sleep easily or just when you're heading to bed or when you first wake up. Let's add some arms into this inhale. We're going to reach your, arm up, your arms up to the sky and then exhale and round and fold your knees. Again, inhale, arms coming up. Let's cactus the arms now. Give a good squeeze in the back of your body and then place your hands down and bring them to your heart. Let's just have a moment to offer an intention into your practice here today. All right, let's release the hands and find our way to our mat. So as we come onto our mat and into our physical you know, movement practice, let's enjoy. Um, the body horizontal for a moment. 
So as you stretch out, let's lengthen and feel that reaching into space. All right, so the arms overhead and feel a little bit of length left side, a little length right side. And let's find that opening and awakening in the body, reaching one side, reaching the other side. And when you're ready, draw your knees into your chest and just have a little bit of rocking. Let your back relax a little bit. Heavy head. A circle of the knees kind of rolling in one direction, feeling your back soften and loosen a sense of ease across your sacrum. Roll the other way. Breathing deep. All right, let's open up your knees away from the center and bring them back in toward. And just finding that range of motion in the hip joints that's available right now. Right knee into your chest, left leg on the ground, and let's move around and have that range of motion in our ankles. So feeling whatever kind of movement you have here, maybe some circles, maybe some wiggles of your toes. It's <clears throat> so good to keep your feet mobile and free as best as we can. Give a good squeeze into the knee, and then let's switch sides, left knee into the chest, right, right leg long on the ground. Feel that compression of your knee hugging in. Keep moving your feet. Heavy head. And we're just gonna go back and forth of bringing one knee in and then bringing the other knee in and moving, you know, a, a little, you don't have to go rapid fire, but just getting uh, the engines of your core are starting to turn on a little bit, finding that range of motion in your extension as much as in the flexion of your knee. And when you're ready, bring two knees into the chest and let's come into happy baby pose. So grab onto your feet, rock a little bit. If it feels good, let your back open up. Maybe as you're rocking, you'd like to um, stretch your leg a little bit. You can do whatever you want here. And then put your feet down onto the ground and bring your arms out to the side. And let's just windshield wiper our knees, kind of rolling one direction and then the other. And then bring your feet up. Uh, or knees up, I should say, knees bent at right angles, but your knees are over your pelvis or a little forward if that's better for your back. Just kind of sense where you need to be, but try not to let your knees go um, beyond your hips. So either over your hips or forward, whatever feels good. We're just gonna do a couple of heel taps. So dropping one heel down and then lifting it back up and dropping the other heel down and lifting it back up. So just going back and forth, let's be very mindful of what's happening in our neck, our head, our shoulders. Try to stay neutral in the rest of your body, stabilizing through the core of you. That core cylinder is supporting the spine. As you tap, tap, we're turning on our hip flexors, breathing deeply. And then stretch out like a star. Feeling that reach in the body, let your hip flexors open up now, extend outward, and while we're out there in space, internally and externally rotate your legs. Ooh, that just gave me a hip cramp. I don't know if it does that to anybody else. Feel your breath. And then when you're ready, go ahead and draw your knees into your chest and let your spine round hug in. One more time. No movement of the femur bones now, just a big open star. And as you exhale, drawing the knees toward the chest. All right, put your feet down onto the ground. And we're going to just um, wake up the center of our body a few different ways here. So we're gonna come up like a bridge, but we're gonna be mobile in this bridge. So arms are down at your sides. You don't have to climb too high onto the tops of the shoulders. We're gonna work with the pelvis. So root your feet, four corners of your feet down. So 
find that before we lift the hips up, we're gonna find our big toe mounds, find our pinky toe mounds, find our inner and outer heels. And when you ground into those four corners of your feet, let's go ahead and lift the hips up, still find that grounding. And we're going to slowly do this. So we're gonna drop our left hip a little faster and then follow with the right hip. You don't even have to touch the ground all the way, but you can raise the ground and then lift the left hip and let the right hip follow. All the while, while we were doing this, you know, rotation in the pelvis, can you feel the four points of your feet ground down into the ground? Make sure you're breathing, make sure your head stays heavy, your neck and shoulders are relaxed, and we're just dropping the left hip, then dropping the right, then lifting the left, and lifting the right. So just kind of getting into the hip flexors and the muscles across the back of the pelvis um, in a unique way while connecting this to our feet the whole time. And then let's pause at the top, find a full bridge now, climb onto the tops of your shoulders, feel the four uh, roots of your feet drop down. And then let's go either take a moment, actually that's all, just take a moment and let your pelvis drop to the ground and rest for just a moment. And feel that symmetry and balance before we go the other direction with our pelvis. Root down the four corners of your feet, lift your hips up. It doesn't have to be super high, it doesn't have to be your biggest bridge. Right hip descends, follow with the left. Let right hip lifts, follow with the right. You don't have to make it all the way to the floor. You can graze the floor. Pay attention to your feet the whole way through. Obviously the weight's gonna to wanna to change. So let's see if we can keep those four points rooted as we rotate our hips, dropping one hip down first, then the other, lifting your right, followed by the left. Dropping the right, followed by the left. How's your breathing? Rest down all the way to the ground. We're going to lift up to a full bridge, root the four corners of your feet, climbing high, maybe climb onto the tops of your shoulders now. Find that full bridge, four points of each foot, rooting down to the ground. Lift your hips, feel your glutes, but not just your glutes. You can experiment by trying to push your feet away from your chest to feel your quads that are engaged, pull your feet toward your shoulders so you feel your back body, hug your feet toward the midline so you feel all those muscles in your inner thighs and pelvic floor, hug your feet away from the midline to turn on those outer hips. And then once you find those four directions, ground the four points again. All right, let's lower the hips down and rest, windshield wiper in your knees, left and right, nice and easy now with our pelvis. Breathing well, head is heavy, shoulders, arms are relaxed. Right, take a moment in a Supta Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees descending out, and pay attention, let this be kind of diagnostic, so our, our inner sensing and what's happening in reality don't always match up. So for me, when I lay here, I feel like my left knee is way lower than my right knee. My inner perception is that there's a very big difference between the two. But then I pick my head up and look, and there is a difference, but it's not as huge as my perception. And maybe um, you have that kind of similar thing. Maybe you have exactly the opposite, where you feel even and then you pick up your head and look, and your hips or your knees are not at the same height. So just do that for a moment. Sense, and then pick up your head and look, and notice where your hips are. All right, let's go ahead and draw our knees up now. Bring your knees into your chest. Big squeeze, tuck your chin toward your chest. We're almost done with this work on the floor, but not quite yet. All right, knees are gonna be up in the air. You can have your feet rest, so you're, you don't have to be at right angles. You can let your feet fall toward the ground. Knees are um, over your hips. You're gonna take your hands, so your 
finger pads um, are on the outsides of your knees for a moment. And just see in this position, you know, do you have even effort? So just gently press your hands into your knees, knees into your hands, finding your breath. All right, and then we're gonna let the knees fall out to the sides, keep the hands, finger pads there until your elbows make it to the floor. And from here, with our elbows resting down now, we're gonna have our hands touch the outer knees. We're not gonna let the knees bring the hands wider than the elbows. So we're gonna keep our hands elbow width apart. And then we're gonna take our feet and draw some circles. So um, we'll go both directions. So go either way uh, that you want to. All right, so toes touch and then circle out. Find your breath. Try not to let your knees move. We're nice and stable from our hips to our knees. There's a lot of rotation in our hip joints, but not because our knees are flailing about. Heavy head, stabilize your core. Switch the angle of your toe turns. So now spin your circles the other way. So many little muscles, uh, you know, our hip joints are so stable. There's a lot of ligaments. There's a lot going on there. All right, and then lift your legs straight up in the air. Flex and point your toes for a moment just to make sure that we're feeling the fullness of your legs. And stabilize your core. Let's stretch our arms overhead if it's available to you. Feel that length in the body. Allow the knit ribs to knit toward the ground. Feel your navel draw down. Slowly lower your legs toward the ground. So I have a piece of furniture in the way, so I'm going to bend my knees. But even if you don't have furniture in the way, if you need to bend your knees and bring them toward your chest at any point, do that. Once you're out there, stretch the right side. Once you got on the ground, I should say, stretch the right side and then stretch the left side and just allow your full body to feel itself on the ground. Knees to chest. When you're ready, give a nice snug hug and then roll over onto your side and come up to your hands and your knees. Okay. Finding your breath. All right, so all fours. Let's return. You know, a lot of times when we get involved in the minutia of our pelvis, you know, like kind of really feeling and sensing um, all those muscles. Uh, we can lose sight of that global sensation. And oftentimes when we're finding core, we forget to breathe. So let's have a moment of cat-cow where we re-nourish the feeling and sensation of whole body movement, whole body breath. Where do you naturally want to inhale? Where do you naturally want to exhale? Move the spine around in any way that feels good. You can wag your tail, you can move your ribs, you can move your head. All right, and then keeping neutral, we're going to drop our hips as far over to the left as we can get them. Come back up and drop your hips the other way. And back up, child's pose. Walk the hands forward, feel that extension. Open up your shoulders, feel the compression of your knees and of your hips. Enjoy this deep forward fold. See if you can let your inhale, imagine that there's a balloon under your sacrum, lifting your sacrum up on the inhale and then deflating your sacrum down on your exhale. We're going to sit for a moment. Take your right foot at your left knee. So kind of in this position, it's, not, it's, it's called deer pose. I've heard it called deer pose, um, where your foot uh, touches your knee and your other leg is kind of like in a modified um, virasana. I just want you to feel into that long side stretch now. 
Imagine you can even take a moment to drop some weight into that hip. Maybe place your hand on the hip to sink it down. And then extend and reach open through your side body. And if it's available, put your hand on the ground and turn toward the ground and lower yourself down. And then come on up and let's turn your legs the other way. Now your left uh, foot and your right knee find contact. Reach that arm up. Feel the extension. Find your breath. Maybe your hands, both of them, come down to the ground and you melt toward the floor with your chest. And then explore this movement, just kind of spinning back and forth. Your arms can come up, your hand can be on your hip. Oh, I forgot to do the hand on the hip on the other side. So maybe on that side, you can compress your hip down for a moment. And you don't even have to do anything with your arms. You can just kind of spin back and forth between these two sides. So let a little rotation in your spine happen. See what it feels like to open up your hips in this way. A little bit of a modified twisting. See if you can feel your ribs move. And come to neutral and to sit. And we're gonna see if we can do this position with no hands, okay? So maybe arms out in front of you and we're just gonna rotate from one side to the other side and do your best, even if you can't go all the way um, down with your knee, that's fine, but do your best to not lean back and then move forward again. See if you can keep yourself as upright as you can as you do this range of motion in your hips. It's kind of a similar thing to the 90-90 stretch, a little, little different. All right. And then find neutral. Feet are hip width apart. Arms are stretched out in front of you. Palms facing forward toward you. And we're going to very slowly lower ourselves down, down, down. Now, I know it's unusual, we haven't even done a dog pose yet, but just bear with me to see if you can sense, you know, that your hips might be getting a little fatigued. Stretch your arms overhead, a big breath. And then we're going to take our hands behind our head, interlace your fingers like you would for an old school sit up. We're going to bring either our knees up um, with our knees bent, or you can do this with straight legs, whichever way feels best to you. I'll turn to the back so you can see my legs better. Okay, so we're going to do just do some uh, twisting actions. So right leg comes down, right elbow and chest up towards left knee, back to center, and switch sides. You can do this with your knee bent or your knee straight, just finding your core, stabilize, breathing deeply, starting to find some of that energy that we found in our hip flexors and pelvis and moving upward now into our torso, feeling the obliques, the transverse abdominis, everything's kind of holding you steady. Breathing well, try not to pull your elbow across your body, see if you can let the elbow follow the chest. How are you breathing? And then after you finish with the left leg descending, we're going to put our feet onto the ground, relax your arms at your sides, find your breath. One more time, the four points groundedness of each foot. Feel your big toes, feel your pinky toes, feel the inner and outer heel. Root those down, lift up to a bridge pose again. Open up through your hips, feel the support of your legs, breathing deeply, and then relax and melt. Roll to your side, come up on tall fours. Breathing well. So find some cat-cows. And yay, we're about to go into our first dog pose. So 
Um, we're going to move, you know, a little outward into our body now, away from our pelvis and center and outward. So reach up, feel that extension as you lift to dog pose, round through the four corners of your hands, index finger mound, pinky finger mound, the two sides of your wrist mounds. Feel the spreading of your toes, the rooting of all of your toe knuckles. Feel that yield and then push off and lengthen. How's your breath? Try to find space from your ribs to your pelvis. And let's walk forward and come to Uttanasana. You can grab your blocks if you would like, soften your skull. Feel free to wag your tail, bounce, whatever feels good. Inhale for a halfway lift. Eye bones move back, feel the openness of the back of the legs, feel the roots of your thighs reach back. Open up the bottom of your feet. And while we're in this half lift, feel the rooting of those four points again. Melt and fold. Rising all the way up. Bring your arms to the sky. Feel that openness across your chest. Let's stretch open here. A big open heart. A little bit of a back bend in the body. As cactus open the arms. Feel that big heart. And then release your hands down. Let's swoop them up again. Big breath. Exhale. Folding forward. A halfway lift. Spine grows longer. Finding that long spine. Melt and fold. Let's step the left foot back, right foot's in front, coming to a lunge. Feel the heart reach forward. Let's start to flow here, straightening and bending that front knee. Feeling the fullness of your breath. Feel those hip flexors start to open a bit when you come into that lunge. And let's just take a moment now to place your back knee onto the ground and feel your chest rise up. You can keep your hands on the blocks or wherever you want, but feel the hip flexor open. Full breaths here. Okay, from this grounded place, root your foot, your, root your front foot well. Reach your left arm up in the air, a little bit of a side stretch here. Feel that fullness of your hip flexors opening and then place your elbow on your knee or past your knee, wherever it goes, finding a twist. Deeply stretch those hip flexors. Open up across your heart. And then come back to center. Let's lift your back knee up off the ground. Feel your lunge again. Root down, rise up. Feel your breath as you come into crescent lunge. Feel that reach and length in the body. And from here, we're going to turn and open up to the side. Parsvo, or sorry, Virabhadrasana too. So feel that reaching, arms coming out to the sides. We're feeling that groundedness of our legs opening up here. Feel the shoulders soften. Drop your weight into your feet. Gaze out over your fingertips. Feel your breath. Notice if your hips already feel a little bit more able to hold this posture because of all the work we've done. Root into all four points of your feet. Reverse your warrior here. Reach that arm up. And then find Parsvo Konasana. Stretch your arm overhead and Feel the hip flexors lengthen here. Try not to push your straight leg, your left leg, hip forward. Draw the femur bone back. Round into both feet. Let's climb all the way back. Turn back to the front of your mat for a dog pose. A long spine, breathing well, neutral leg. Let's come forward into a plank and hold yourself nice and steady. Integrate into the center of your body. And let's lower our knees down, find the ground. Both shoulder rolls. 
Inhale, cobra pose, big open chest. Melt and fold. Take your arms out to the side wide like the letter V. Palms root. Inhale, rise up here. Stretch your left leg back. Stretch your right leg back. Let your hips go offline from each other just for a little bit. And then stretch both legs back and open up through your heart. Melt and fold. Come up on tall fours. Move your spine a lot. Let it wiggle to the sides or roll around in circles. Have a moment to settle your hips back towards child's pose and feel that compression in the hip joints. Just let your body relax. When you're ready, back up to dog pose or to all fours, whichever feels better for your body. Breathing well. Maybe pedaling your feet, maybe kneading your hands, one and then the other. And find your grounding, all four corners of all four limbs. Even if your heels don't touch, you can root them toward the ground. Let's bring our left foot front. Okay, so when we come into a lunge on this side, let's go ahead and find our knee coming down to the ground. Feel into the open heart here. So there's a really big hip flexor stretch. I promise we'll do the range of motion, you know, back and forth in just a moment. I know I'm going in a different sequence. So feel that lunge. Notice if your low back sinks, stabilize. Hug to the midline with your inner thighs. Feel the uh, muscles around your pelvic floor support you so you're not sinking. When you're ready, hand on your block or hand on your knee and reach that right arm up, maybe a little bit over to the side. Feel that full stretch through your hips. Cross. That arm over. Maybe your elbow comes to the outside of your knee. My form is more comfortable on my knee. Whatever feels good. Still grounding through your knee and foot. Feel that you're not sinking into your lumbar spine, but the little balloons of your vertebrae are intact and well. Feel the four points of that front foot root to the ground. And then release your hands back to the blocks. Lift your back knee up off the ground, and let's bend and straighten the front knee. Okay, moving back and forth. See what it feels like to have this sense of support of the ground, of the blocks, support of our breath. Ready, the rooting of the legs. Feel the feet drop down. Come up to a crescent lunge as you're ready. Find your roots, and then when you're ready, open your arms up to the sky. Feel that extension. Notice your low back. Support with your core. There's so much muscles that we've already turned on. Press your front foot, especially the heel, into the ground. Okay, we're gonna open this up into Virabhadrasana toe too. So turn to the long edge of your mat, bend your knees, stretch your arms out to the sides. Finding breath, ground the four corners of your feet. Feel the shoulders drop down. Feel the support of your hips, of all the strong work that's available in those muscles. So many muscles can help you here. Relax the shoulders, gaze out over your fingers. Finding breath. From here, we're going to reach into the extension of a reverse warrior. Open your ribs up. And place your elbow on your knee, Parsvo Panasana. Stretching that arm. Feel the extension from your back foot all the way through. Notice this uh, right hip. Try not to push it forward. Draw it back. Track your left knee in line with your middle toes. Okay, 
come back up. Turn to the long edge of your mat with your feet now, legs wide. Draw your femur bones back, let your spine rest down. You can bring your arms forward like dog pose arms, or you can have your hands in line with your feet or anywhere that's comfy. And now from here, we're gonna heel toe our feet in a little bit. You can use blocks under your hands if you want, okay? We're eventually gonna come to our feet hip width apart and turn toward the front of your mat. Come into Uttanasana, relax here for a moment, soften your skull. And inhale and rise all the way up. It's coming to the sky. And let's trace down to the center line of the body and pause here for a moment. Feel how alive your hips are. Hopefully, my hope is that you feel a whole cylinder of aliveness around your femur bones right at the hip joints. So it's not just the front or the back or the sides or the insides, but kind of a global feeling. I'm going to turn this into a little bit of stability in a, not really a, a squat, but, and not really a chair pose, but kind of somewhere in between. So have the feet hip width apart, and we're going to come down as if we're going to squat, but we're going to stay kind of high like a chair pose would be. Take your hands to the outside of the knees, round the four corners of your feet, especially the big toe mounds and the inner heels. See if you can root your toes and then fan out your other toes. Round the four corners. Drop your hips maybe a smidge more. Press the outer knees into the hands. Counter with a little pressure of your hands into the outer knees. Draw your femur bones back. Try to track your knees right over the middle toes. From here, let go of your hands, but don't let go of that effort. And reach your arms forward, another kind of modified chair pose. We're not lifting up, we're leaning forward a bit. Finding your breath, root into the four corners of your feet, feel the even work in your hips. And then slowly, like you weigh a thousand pounds, push up to stand. Finding your breath, open your heart, release your arms down at your sides. Let's come up onto your toes and back onto your heels. As you let your hips relax for a moment, just keep alive that sense of balancing across your feet. And turn this into a tree pose, but before we do, melt a bit. Just feel all the efforting that's happened in your core and your hips and your legs, your feet kind of drain toward the ground so you feel deeply rooted. Sink your energy. Wait until you feel energized for the pose, which might be a moment, so you don't feel like you have to rush into it. But when, and of course, if you need a little support with some balance, holding something, you can do that. When you're ready, right foot drops a little bit more energy into the ground, pick up your left foot and find tree pose. All right, so four corners of your foot. Feel the work of the core and the pelvic floor. Feel the work of the hips to let that hip bolt that's in the air, the knee draw back and the pelvis stay turned forward. Maybe you want to lift your arms up in the air. Maybe you'd rather have a different position with your arms. Let your neck relax, let your gaze soften, let your breath fill. Unlock your standing knee. Feel the four points of your foot on the ground. And now to come out, slide your knee in front of you and up, and then bring that foot down onto the ground. And just have a moment to kind of um, we move between the waiting in one foot and waiting in the other foot. Just let your body, you can even jump a little bit or wiggle or bounce. Just see if you can let go of the pose. So you start the second side with a fresh mind and body. Hold on to something if you need. Left foot roots deeply. 
We're picking up our right foot. It doesn't have to be up high toward your thigh. It can be low, wherever it's comfy. Feel that hugging into the femur bone with your foot or to the shin bone with your foot. Maybe your hands start at your heart. Maybe they stay there. Maybe your arms, you feel better with balance if your arms are out or up, whatever feels good. We're feeling that knee, that right knee open up without turning the pelvis. Root into the four corners of your foot without gripping your toes. Melt the base of your skull. Soften your gaze. Feel your pelvic floor and your core help the process here. Unlock your standing knee. Unlock your grippy toes. Out of the pose, lift your knee forward and place it down onto the ground. Come to the front of your mat. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, folding forward. The halfway lift, spine grows, melt and fold again. Let's step all the way back, extending into a long body dog pose. Feel the roots of your forelimbs find the way into the earth. Rebound up through your body and feel extended and long. Notice your breathing. Let's come forward into a plank. Holding yourself steady here, breathing well. Knees down onto the ground, find the ground. Roll the shoulders a few times, any back bend of your choice. Find that neutrality, that symmetry of the pelvis, melt and come back down. Draw your left knee up high toward your armpit, Stay low here for a moment. Move your blocks out of the way so that you won't get in your way. Enjoy that compression in the hip, and let's go ahead and turn it into a twist. Take your right arm over to the left and open up to a twist on the ground. Turn your head, let your knee leave the floor, open across your chest, and enjoy this pose. Fill yourself up with your breathing body. Relax and find your way out of the posture. Second side, right knee up high toward your right armpit. Body is low to the ground. Feel it in your back and in your hip with compression. And when you're ready, left arm crosses over to the right and we're twisting open here. Allow your knee to leave the floor. Let your head rest on the ground. Turn your head to the right. Let your right hand rest on the ground. Come back onto your belly and come up onto all fours. Let that twist kind of release itself, that back bend release itself from your body and find child's pose. And just let your legs compress here. Breathing well. Let that balloon travel down your spine all the way into your sacrum. And we're going to find ourselves turning over onto our back. So let's reverse your pigeon pose. Now, of course, you can do a different hip stretch, anything that feels good. If you want to, if reverse pigeon is a little challenging for you, you can cross your right thigh over your left thigh and draw your knees in. 
If you want um, something different, you could go into a full pigeon pose if you prefer. Allow your head to rest gently onto the ground and feel your shoulders soften. As you draw your left knee towards your chest, holding on either to the front of the shin or the back of the thigh, try to sense, um, a, you know, maybe you want a little bit of rocking left and right. Maybe you want a little stillness. Sense what your body needs. your legs down, feet onto the floor. We'll switch sides, left foot on right knee or switching sides to whatever pose you've decided to do. Either grab onto the front of the shin or the back of the thigh. Let your head rest heavy on the ground. Try not to strain your shoulders. Breathe well. Full exhale, letting your hips relax completely. Feet our feet down. We're going to grab a block. Feet on the ground. Block on the low height underneath your pelvis. Now, depending on your back, you might stretch one leg out with your heel down on the ground at a time and then switch. Or perhaps you're okay with both legs going out. And you can experiment. You can take your feet wider than hip width, hip width, closer. Kind of experiment with what feels good. Maybe you want to stretch your arms overhead. Maybe you don't. So just find a little bit of opening across the front of your pelvis. Symmetry. Breathing deeply. Lift your hips up, get that block out of there. Pelvis back down onto the ground. A little bit of windshield wipering, left and right. Knees into your chest, a little bit of rocking, maybe a happy baby, maybe some rocking plow, whichever and whatever helps you relax. You relax. And as you're ready, Shavasana. We're going to lie down with our legs on the ground, the arms on the ground. If there's any other variation that your body wants, you do you. There's no right or wrong way for Shavasana. You start to let your body settle. Let your limbs drop, head drop. If you'd like to do one or two rounds of that box breath here, you can, and you don't have to.
Take a moment to bend your knees and put your feet on the floor or bend your knees and put your feet or your knees toward your chest. Whatever feels good. Find your way to your side as you feel ready. To sit. To sit on something, allow your hips to relax, let your knees fall, feel the groundedness of your pelvis. Buoyancy of your spine. Place your palms together and fill your breath. Let's offer our practice, send your energy outward. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.